Welcome to the Autism Alliance of Michigan Skill Building Series. Autism Alliance of Michigan is guided by the vision that people with autism will lead lives that meet their greatest potential. The Michigan of Autism Alliance of Michigan is to lead efforts to raise expectations and expand opportunities for people touched by autism across the lifespan. Hello, my name is Clarissa Rondo. I'm a board certified and licensed behavior analyst, as well as a licensed clinical social worker and consultant for Autism Alliance of Michigan. Welcome to our webinar today, focusing on behavior basics. Today we will discuss part one, what are the ABCs of behavior? This PowerPoint can be printed and filled in during this webinar. It is customized for you and the individual behaviors you would like to see less of over time. Applied behavior analysis, or more commonly known as ABA. What is it? It's an evidence-based practice that focuses objectively defined behaviors of social significance and how they relate to the environment around them or the individual themselves. Decisions that we make are based on real evidence. How does it work? Behavior analysis takes evidence-based strategies and works to apply the strategies to everyday situations to increase and or teach functional skills, the skills we want to see more of, and decrease maladaptive behaviors or the behaviors we want to see less of. There are many different evidence-based strategies. When working with persons specifically trained in ABA, they are able to take the strategies and manipulate and modify them so that they are used to increase appropriate skills and decrease maladaptive behaviors, which is good. But what can you as a parent do now? This training will focus on some of the basics and everyday strategies that can be effective at reducing maladaptive or unwanted behaviors and encouraging more of the behaviors you want to see. However, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Behaviors are different for everyone. All treatment plans are very customized. This presentation will be an overview of some of the basic principles that you can use immediately in your home. So what is behavior? Behavior is anything and everything a person does, such as waving, coughing, laughing, hitting, kicking, blinking, walking, talking, and the list goes on. There's a term called the dead man's test, which states, if a dead man can do it, it's not behavior. If a dead man can't do it, it is behavior. The everyday definition of this is when we think about behavior, our mind often jumps to things or behaviors we don't want to see, such as hitting, kicking, biting. Behavior also encompasses behaviors we want to see, such as laughing, smiling, high fives, making a puzzle, doing an activity, etc. This training, however, will focus on the maladaptive behaviors or behaviors we do not want to see. But behavior is much more complex and the strategies used to increase or decrease various behaviors can be customized for the target behavior or behavior we want to see more or less of. First, we need to know exactly what behaviors we are looking at. What are some of the common maladaptive or problem behaviors you experience in everyday life? What would you like to see decreased? So on this slide, if you printed your PowerPoint or if you're just taking notes in a notebook, what would your target behavior be? Common target behaviors are aggression, self-injurious behaviors, property disruption, running away from adult supervision, unsafe behaviors such as touching the stove, um, running indoors, tipping over TVs, or just maybe some non-cooperation, not following adult delivered instructions. Write down the target behavior that you would like to think more about as we continue with this webinar. Functional behavior assessments. Just for a little background, 
When you're working with a board certified behavior analyst or BCBA or another professional um, that is completing a behavior assessment for you or with your team, the information that will be gathered would be the target behavior, which you just listed. Once the target behavior is identified and defined, they'll begin asking questions about the antecedents, the consequences, and develop a hypothesized function, or in other words, why we think the behavior is happening. There'll be some direct observations and some data collection. And with that, they will come up with a plan of how to reduce that problem behavior. And that's what we're gonna work through together today. So some example scenarios of target behaviors. The target behavior is identified in red on the screen. The first example, mom walked into the room and told Johnny to pick up his toys. Johnny threw a toy at mom, the target behavior. Mom walked out of the room. Johnny continued to play with his toys. Our second example, Johnny is independently playing on the floor with his toys and he begins to scream. Mom walks over and begins to play with Johnny. Third example, Johnny asks to go outside and play. Mom says no. Johnny asks again, same answer. Johnny proceeds to bang his head on the floor. Mom interrupts Johnny and tells him to go outside to play. Fourth example, Johnny realizes his hands have marker on them. He washes his hands. His hands are clean, no more marker marks. And the last example, Johnny is sitting by himself. He puts his thumb in his mouth and is fucking on it. Johnny is smiling and sucking his thumb for the next 20 minutes. These are the target behaviors that we're going to continue to work with today as we work through this webinar. So possible antecedents directly before the behavior. These are some common examples of antecedents. And then there's also a thought for you to list additional ones that you may be familiar with in regards to antecedents that ha happen with the target behavior you have selected. So antecedents happen directly before the behavior as closely tied to that target behavior as possible. Common ones include an instruction, no attention being given to the individual, one-on-one -on -one attention, ending a preferred activity, could also be engaging in a preferred activity. Some other common examples would be transitioning from one activity to another, uh, someone else in the environment getting attention and the specific individual is not. Can you think of any other antecedents that would happen directly before that target behavior that you selected? You can write those on this slide. So antecedents. Let's see if as we go through these examples here, if you're able to pick up on the antecedent to these different target behaviors we've selected, underline them on your slide or write them in your notebook or just say them out loud as we're talking here. So antecedent to throwing a toy at mom. The scenario is mom walked into the room and told Johnny to pick up his toys. Johnny threw a toy at mom. Mom walked out of the room and Johnny continued to play with his toys. Same thing with this slide here. See if you can identify the antecedent, and then we'll review um, the different examples after we're through. Johnny asks to go outside and play. Mom says no. Johnny asks again, same answer. Johnny proceeds to bang his head on the floor. Mom interrupts Johnny and tells him to go outside and play. Our third example, Johnny realized his hands have marker on them. He washes his hands. His hands are clean. No more marker marks. Next example, Johnny is sitting by himself. He puts his thumb in his mouth and is sucking on it. Johnny is smiling and sucking his thumb for the next 20 minutes. With our examples here, the antecedent to each of the target behaviors is outlined in blue. Take a moment 
and see if the antecedents that you selected matches up what's here in blue on this slide. So the antecedent to the first example is mom walked into the room and told Johnny to pick up his toys. Antecedent to number two is Johnny's independently playing. Number three is mom says no, she set a limit. Number four, the hands have marker on them. And number five, Johnny is sitting by himself. Next, we're gonna talk about possible consequences. Consequences happen directly after the target behavior. Common consequences are social attention, getting attention from somebody directly after they engaged in that target behavior, access to preferred edibles or items. Um, an example of that would be a child is fussing and crying and wanting a cookie, as in this picture here. Um, behavior would be fussing and crying and um, the verbal request. And the consequence for that behavior is mom or dad or grandpa or grandma or babysitter or teacher um, provides the cookie, the preferred edible or item. Another possible very common consequence is escape. The individual is able to escape the instruction or direction and someone else completes the task for them. Another very common consequence is delay. The individual is asking for a longer um, duration with their movie, their tablet, their video game. They're able to delay turning it off. Or there's a delay in the task that they need to start completing. The example here, go outside first, then come back in for homework is a first then example of how sometimes that delay takes effect. Can you think of any other consequences? Be thinking about your target behavior that you selected, the antecedent, the target behavior. What are those consequences that happen directly after that target behavior you selected? And we'll go through our examples here. Mom walked into the room and told Johnny to pick up his toys as our antecedent. Johnny threw a toy at mom as our target behavior. Underline the consequence. Mom walked out of the room. Johnny continued to play with his toys. Next example, Johnny is independently playing on the floor with his toys and he begins to scream. Mom walks over and begins to play with Johnny. Next example, Johnny asks to go outside and play. Mom says no. Johnny asks again, same answer. Johnny proceeds to bang his head on the floor. Mom interrupts Johnny and tells him to go outside and play. Next example, Johnny realized his hands have marker on them. He washes his hands. His hands are clean. No more marker marks. And last one, Johnny is sitting by himself. He puts his thumb in his mouth and is sucking on it. Johnny is smiling and sucking his thumb for the next 20 minutes. And here we have our examples as well as the antecedents, the target behavior, and the consequence. See if your answers that you selected match up with these. The first example, the consequence would be mom walked out of the room and Johnny continued to play with his toys. Second example, the consequence would be mom walks over and begins to play with Johnny. The third, mom interrupts Johnny and tells him to go outside and play. The fourth, no more marker marks, they're all gone. And the fifth one, smiling and sucking his thumb for the next 20 minutes. This next slide here is intended for you to write your target behavior, which would be under the letter B, the antecedent to those target behaviors or a single target behavior that you've selected, and the consequence so that you can keep track of the ones that are specific to your life, not just the examples that we went over here today. So take a few minutes now and continue after this uh, webinar is over, writing down those target behaviors while this information is fresh in your mind. Pair that with those antecedents. What happens directly before that target behavior? And also those consequences. What happens directly after that target behavior happens? 
We're going to be using this information in part two of our Behavior Basics webinar to determine what's happening, what's going on, and how can we resolve this? How can we see less of this behavior over time? So I hope you'll join us for the next webinar, part two of Behavior Basics. And in the meantime, I wanted to share some resources with you for additional information, questions, and resources, please contact the Autism Alliance of Michigan. Autism Alliance of Michigan is prepared at no cost to counsel, advocate, and connect families to evidence-based care and support, however long it takes. Our navigation program will connect anyone touched by autism to a free, lifelong guide with professional help and answers. Thank you for attending our webinar today.